bien, continuamos con la sesión. Muchísimas gracias a los ponentes y al moderador de la anterior mesa redonda. Y, y vamos a continuar, como les digo, con la siguiente intervención. La verdad es que tenemos la oportunidad de tener un, un afortunado y, y un estupendo upgrade. Y es que va a estar eh, con nosotros el que hoy es el presidente de Microsoft Internacional, Jean Philippe eh, Courtois. Hasta ahora hemos escuchado distintas intervenciones eh, que han tenido que ver con el impacto que está teniendo y va a tener el entorno macro en la función financiera, el entorno regulatorio, cómo el modelo de negocio influye en la función. Y ahora vamos a ver, efectivamente, cómo la revolución digital que hemos vivido, pero sobre todo la que vamos a vivir, va a transformar los contenidos y la forma de hacer de los responsables financieros. Decía Sandra Moreno esta mañana que el CFO, entre otras muchas cosas, eh, una de las grandes eh, tareas que tiene por delante es liderar la agenda digital con, de la compañía. Y para ello, como les digo, tenemos con nosotros la fortuna de tener eh, eh, para desarrollar este tema a Jean Philippe Courtois, que les digo es el presidente de Microsoft International. Microsoft International es un territorio que abarca 100 subsidiarias de la compañía que dan servicio a 240 países fuera de Estados Unidos y Canadá. Es decir, es el presidente de todo Microsoft, excepto Estados Unidos y Canadá. Tiene una extensísima carrera en Microsoft, pero además, les cuento, es el responsable oficial de Microsoft en el Instituto Montaigne. Eh, ha actuado además como presidente en la Task Force del Foro Económico Mundial para la Reducción de la Brecha Digital, así como en la Comisión de Tecnologías de Información y Comunicación de la Comisión Europea. Europea. En 2009 actuó como embajador especial de la Comisión Europea para el Año de la Creatividad y la Innovación y en 2011, hace solamente tres años, fue nombrado uno de los Tech Top 25 según el diario The Wall Street Journal Europe. Muchísimas gracias, eh, Juan Filip, y adelante es tu turno. Bueno, gracias. Muchas gracias, Enrique, y muchas gracias por su invitación a este congreso. Discúlpame, porque mi castellano está bastante limitado y yo voy a hablar inglés ahora, ¿ok? It's a pleasure to be with all of you today in this uh, important Congress. What I'd like to do is really build on the theme you've been discussing of transforming the CFO role in a digital world. So I'm going to talk about uh, the context for the technology change in the world. I'm going to talk about the context of the change for the enterprise. I will also share with you our own transformation journey as a company, Microsoft, because we also have to reinvent ourselves. And then I will try to finish by sharing some examples of real case studies of enterprise using digital to transform themselves. So we have a vision as a company, and we have a very strong viewpoint. We see the world, the economy, the society becoming digital, and we call that a mobile-first, cloud-first world. I'm sure you heard about those big buzz worlds. Uh, indeed, across the world today, you've got more than three billion mobile devices being used by many kind of people on the planet. In the next couple of years, you'll have more than 200 billion sensors on all kind of machines, processes, clusters. Indeed, I've, with me, this beautiful, you cannot see it necessarily here, uh, Ben, Microsoft Ben, that has seven sensors. Not only, not only it captures my heartbeat, the UV, it will, I can actually talk to it. I can talk to Cortana. What's my next meeting? You cannot see it, but Cortana is actually showing and checking on my calendar, on my phone, which could be an iPhone, Android, or Windows phone, what I'm supposed to do and gives me actually some context for this particular meeting right now. So this is a world where uh, all kinds of processes interaction will be reinvented. And as a result of that, the overall IT industry will be accounting for almost $2.5 trillion. I know that for you as CFOs, you know how to count the many zeros on the trillions. <laughs> But the key, the key message here is the multiplier impact of IT into the broad enterprise, into your companies. Now, when we look at that context, and when you actually ask the question to the enterprise, CEOs, CFOs, chief of sales, and other big decision makers, 
you see three big phenomenons happening across the world. Number one, many enterprises look at that opportunity of digital to reinvent the customer journey. What it is, it's actually all the touch points of customers before they buy, when they consume your product or services, and after that. You know, for the first time ever in the US, as an example, people are spending more, more time on their mobile versus TV. This is a huge shift. <laughs> and even happening in the US, which, which, which used not to be a mobile country first. The second big phenomenon is enterprises are trying to apply digital from A to Z, meaning from designing a new product, innovating in a service, in reinventing the customer care, in refining their supply chain, all the way with the feedback loop of the customers. It's a complete reinvention of many different types of industries. And the third goal of that transformation is to be more responsive. More responsive because if you don't move fast enough, your company is going to be irrelevant very quickly. You have to move faster. One great example I'm going to share with you because I'm so excited. I landed yesterday afternoon in Madrid, and I was uh, so excited to visit and meet uh, with the CEO of Real Madrid, okay, pretty well-known uh, enterprise, I think, in Spain and Madrid. Why am I taking that example? Because we announced publicly, so I can share, an incredible reinvention of Real Madrid through digital. And we are very honored as a technology provider to build a digital platform for our Real Madrid to basically monetize the 400 million fans they have across the world. So not just the 80,000 people, the socios, attending the game like yesterday night, with a great score, by the way, 4-0, easy game, I think, for Real Madrid. But they can actually, they will monetize on the second screen, on a tablet, on a phone, on a TV, after, before the game, with people in Indonesia, people in China, people in Latin America, and we are building that end-to-end -end platform with Real Madrid, which is, which is a wonderful change for the club to continue to lead, actually, worldwide sports with such a huge brand. So this is a big phenomenon happening. In that context, I think CFOs, you, have a big role to play. Indeed, when you look at uh, the function of the CFO, we see more and more CFOs in charge of IT. You see the charts and the numbers, 42 uh, CFOs where IT reports into them globally. This is a global survey. I don't have the numbers for Spain. I'm told, and I've come to Spain many times the last uh, 12 years of my life, there's probably a bit less of that in Spain, but I think it's, it's happening more and more. And, you know, the second important as well factor, certainly CFO has a big word to say on the IT investment. Even if IT doesn't report into IT, we know that many of the big digital innovation have to go uh, through the CFO to be approved with an understanding of a strategic investment. So, when we look at the CFO role, and I'm not the expert, you are the expert, we've been discussing a lot of that, clearly it's moving. It's moving from financial reporting, financial planning, with an increasing regulation coming to you at the local level, at the country level, at the EU level, at the industry level, and on top of that, the compliance bar is increasing, I'll come back to that, which means that the CFO has to be obviously more than a numbers person. He or she has to be a strategist, and he, she has to be one of the key decision makers of the enterprise for the future. I would also, highlight, would also like to highlight a very particular dimension of the CFO role, which is compliance. You know, I happen to be on the board of a public company, a pharmaceutical company, and I'm sitting at the audit committee myself with the CFO of that company, with the chief compliance officer of the company, and I know for a fact that a CFO is really a key person to define the risk management framework, all kind of risks that can impact your business, uh, from operation to reputational, reputation risk to technology risk as well. And you've got to set up a framework of policies, of tools, and technologies helping you to have a better handle on the compliance process in your company so that you can really have a high bound compliance 
and keep your company's brand reputation, your people safe. I'll come back to it because I think there's a lot to say about using cloud, using mobile social technologies while managing, managing risk at the same time. It's very important, I think, the CFOs raise also their bar in tackling those issues. Now, let me talk about the way we as a company, Microsoft, are reinventing ourselves uh, to be leading in this mobile first cloud first world. You know, we just announced nine months ago a new CEO, Satya Nadella. We, this is only our third CEO in 39 years. We don't change CEOs every few years at Microsoft, three CEOs in 39 years. And under the leadership of Satya Nadella, we've made it clear that we are putting the user at the center of our strategy. We really want to enable and provide the best experience, the highest productivity to the users in their life. Digital life, digital work. I think like all of you, all of your employees, your consumers, you wake up in the morning, you have one, two, some people are confused, there are four or five devices, and you go back and forth during your day between your personal contacts, whatever they are, whoever they are on social networks, Facebook, Twitter, and others, Instagram, and then you go back to your enterprise application, and you have to do that in a very productive way, in a very secure way. We really want to enable that connection. I think a great example of that is the way we use technology like Skype. I don't know how many of you use Skype to connect with family members, friends across the world or in Spain. No, we have actually connected the dots between Skype as a consumer, as an example, a consumer who wants to get a loan in Spain now to buy a house, and this is probably a scenario uh, of interest in a, you know, in, in a challenging market, and that person wants to get the best specialist of the bank. He or she can use Skype on a mobile, on a phone, a tablet, then connect with Skype to Skype for business. We call that link at Microsoft, which is secure and federated, and get immediate access by video conferencing with that specialist to establish the trust, to establish actually the, the connection, so that they can expedite the process of the loan. That scenario is something we do today with such technologies, putting the user at the center. Our strategy is really to build two core strategic assets. Because to achieve those scenarios, we need to have a top-class cloud infrastructure. So this is what you see on the top, the cloud operating system. And the cloud operating system is really a very large infrastructure that we've been investing on as a company for the last 10 years, not just one year, we have today the largest cloud infrastructure in the world. Last fiscal year, we indeed invested $4.5 billion of data centers in the world, uh, including countries like China. We are the only global cloud provider having onshore operations in mainland China, which is not an easy thing to do as a Chinese government, but we do it. And, and we are enabling billions of people and uh, dozens and millions of businesses in the world to use of services at a very large scale on the cloud. The second core aspect of our strategy is the Windows operating system at the core of the experience. And we are reinventing Windows, with Windows 8.1, on the phone, on the tablet, all the way to the Xbox, the large screens. And we already kind of pre-announced the future Windows, Windows 10, which will raise the bar in terms of usability, in terms of writing application once for all the platforms and all the screens, and in terms of security, reaching the highest bar of security to deploy those mobile devices to all of your people in full security. So this is the, the kind of vision we have, and as a result, we really want to be the productivity and platform company thriving in this mobile-first, cloud-first world. And in order to build that, we build that very comprehensive business cloud, cloud for the business, with three main building blocks. One is the platform, where you can run infrastructure and application as a service. We call that Azure. The other one is the way people work, collaborate, get more productive. We call it Office 365. It's a suite of services in the cloud. And the third one is really at the core of the business, ERP, CRM, all the business, basically, and dynamics of the enterprise. 
I'll come back to the three attributes of our cloud because I think it's very important when you take a cloud decision. But to make it more relevant for businesses, we've been adding some additional services. Power BI. I'm sure you talked a lot about insights. Moving from the big data, overwhelming amount of data coming to your people, to your department, to your function, to actually capturing real-time the insights, showing in a very visual way the market share, the change, the change of prices, the change of uh, trends in your market, and being able immediately, not just you as CFOs, but all the people in the organization, to make a decision based on that. We've be, been building as well Internet of Things services. And I'll come back with an example to be very specific about the kind of service you can build in industries, healthcare, retail, to have this end-to-end -end service like this one I was using on my band, which is cloud-enabled. It's not something just on my band, it's actually on the cloud right now. But the key thing, I believe, is the way we are actually building that cloud. It's about a, trust, it's about a trusted cloud, hybrid cloud, and running any services on a device. I'd like to spend a few more minutes, a couple of minutes, on the trusted cloud. Everywhere I go in the world, I meet with CEOs, CFOs, CIOs as well, and we always have this big discussion at the government level too, on cloud and risk management. So as a company, we have decided to step up and really embrace four dimensions of trusted cloud, of what we call a trusted cloud. The first dimension is cybersecurity. As you can imagine, when you build such a large-scale infrastructure of investment I was talking about, we don't leave any chance uh, to um, random actions. We build seven lines of defense in our data centers, we are encrypting all application services, not just Microsoft application services and customers' data, but also doing the same for applications. So if you run an application, business application on our cloud, it can be fully encrypted as well. And the same when the information flows between our data center and your own data center on some other uh, data centers as well. The second dimension is data privacy. Here in Spain, you may have heard about actually some unique partnership and requirements we comply with in Spain with the Data Protection Authority. We do the same in every single country in the world. Indeed, Microsoft is the only global cloud company that is certified to be EU compliant with the European Union to run our cloud services. It's been fully audited, fully certified by the EU, and we have that in our contract with our customers. The third big attribute of that trusted cloud is compliance. Compliance is a big world, big deal. And there's a lot of standards coming our way in technology. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to avoid with a lot of uh, standards numbers like 27001, which is a security ISO standards. There's more coming. We are standing behind those standards bodies as a company because we want to share with you all the compliance processes and the auditing you can do on our own cloud services if you decide to move some of your application to our cloud. Last but not least, transparency. We have decided in a number of countries in the world, like Spain, to share in a very secure way with some very uh, specific security experts of the government, typically security experts of the country, to have access to the source code of our products. Yes, we do. So that people can check that, no, there's no back door to the Microsoft services. You cannot just open the door from MSA and, and just check the data you want to check. Not true. It's not true at all. Indeed, as a company, we are actually suing the U.S. government. Okay? There's a big case in the court which is escalated to the ne ne next level of jurisdiction because the U.S. government wanted to have access to some people data in our European data center, and we say no. Why should you be able to access those data in the European data center when it, we are talking about European citizens? So the case is being checked by justice right now as we talk. It's an important I think, tests for the industry in terms of our commitment to that compliance. I've been a bit long, but I think it's important. So this is really the framework we have, and it's also about hybrid cloud. Our cloud is not black and white. We are not asking our customers to put everything on the cloud. This does not happen, never, ever, of any company I know. You can pick the work cloud, application you want to have on a public cloud, 
and you can connect with your private cloud. We have the same core architecture, the same one, with the same capabilities in your on-premise data centers versus what we have in our big, large-scale data centers. And we do that with many clients across the world. And last not least, which is a big challenge for our company, we have decided to open and run any services on any device. Office 65, you can use it on your iPhone, on your iPad, on your Android device, not just the Windows Mobile. We are actually partnering with IBM, SAP, Oracle, open source on our cloud services, which is a big, it's a big deal because we know all the customers want actually to embrace that diversity. Now, I'd like to finish with a few examples of what it means for transforming the enterprise and where I think the CFOs uh, can play a big role. You know, when I'm meeting with CEOs or CFOs, they don't talk about the technology. They talk about growing revenue. They talk about reducing costs. They talk about changing the culture. They talk about compliance. A couple of examples. One in Spain, Acciona, Acciona Transmediterranea, which is, I think, a well-known infrastructure or services company in Spain. We helped that company a couple of years ago to replatform their actually shipping ticketing service they have for cruise. I think they have 27 million passengers a year, so big, big traffic. It was a mainframe application. We moved that mainframe application in a few months, not years, to our Azure Cloud Platform. They've been saving 30% of cost in the first year, 70% of cost after four years. Huge difference in the way they are handling that process now on the Cloud Platform. Second example, ThyssenKrupp. This is a big German consumption, and we've been working with them for the last nine months. We've been working with the CEO of the elevators division. As you know, ThyssenKrupp has many millions of elevators. Maybe there are some in these Congress centers. Who knows? And the big problem or the big opportunity they have is the way they can address and do a great job on the service level of the elevators so that they don't break. So what we did, we not only equipped many elevators with sensors like those ones on the elevators to capture the health of the elevators, but we built a service on Azure on our cloud platform with predictive analytics. So based on all the history, all the what we call the machine learning abilities we have, we are predicting when that elevator in that facility of that customer is going to break. And that enables Tyson Group to send a technician before it breaks to fix the problem. And with that, they are completely reinventing the maintenance business as a big profit pool for the company. And it's a complete solution that has been developed in four or five months. No, they're going to extend it because we started with a few thousand elevators. They have got millions of them. But it's just one example to pick your minds on the new scenarios you can come up with, depending on your industry, with the Internet of Things. You know, changing the culture, I think there's many great examples I see across the world. And Barcelona, uh, City of Barcelona, Ayuntamiento, has done a great job using rationalized exchange email service across all civil servants, saving a lot of money. But they've also developed a CRM approach where they connect all the citizens with a 360 view of the citizens to connect and have the appropriate level of service. And they are doing a great job of having actually one of the best level service, service level of the citizens uh, in, in many cities I've seen traveling the world. The last one is compliance, very well-known bank, Asia Bank in Spain. We've been uh, very honored to work with Keisha Bank for the last uh, 12, 18 months on this project, which is about equipping their small business division to go and, and basically recruit and open many accounts with small businesses. And they need to equip their salespeople with phones and tablets in a very secure way, of course. We could not have those people losing a tablet, which will happen eventually all the time, without wiping out the content remotely without having a fully secure store of the application they're going to run, while having the ability to move back and forth as a user on the enterprise device and their personal life as well. So those are four examples I wanted to briefly share with you of the way I think digital helps reimagine the enterprise. And I think you as CFO, and I heard the, the previous uh, conclusion of the speech, you can and you should have a big role. You should have a big role both in terms of actually understanding the risk level and the way technology can help you 
better handle risk management for compliance for your company. Number two, enabling you to play a strategic role on some of the transformation agendas of your company, picking some scenarios where your enterprise would benefit a lot from digital. And the third way, it's about providing you with all the business insights you need in your job to do an even better job on what the numbers tell you for the future of your company. With that, I'd like to thank you a lot for your attention. And I'd like also to uh, basically suggest if you have more questions to come, to contact our team in Spain. You've got an email address, enterprise Spain, uh, Microsoft.com. We'll be more than happy to invite you in our technology centers, to have envisioning workshops, to share notes with our own CFOs as well on the way we work and how we use our tools so that we can pick on some of your scenarios, opportunities together. Muchas gracias por su atención. Uh, pues muchísimas gracias. Thank you very much, uh, Jean-Philippe Courtois. Uh, ha sido un placer, la verdad, escuchar uh, uh, las reflexiones de una persona cuyo tablero de observación no es tal o cual país, sino, sino el mundo en general. Muchísimas gracias.